Alhamdulillah La ilaha illallah Wa dahu la shirik lahu I greet everybody The universal greetings of As-salamu alaykum Wa alaykum salam Today's sermon is going to be called The Victory The Victory Bear with me, because as usual, I'm going to be all over the place, but I'm going to tie everything in. I'm going to read from Surah 40, 41, and 48. I'm going to start with Surah 40. I at 30. Surah 40, I at 30. My Lord, I seek refuge in you from the suggestions of the devils. And my Lord, I seek refuge in you, least ever come near me. The one who believes said, O oh, my people, I fear for you. Excuse me. Okay, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. 39, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. 4039. Oh my people, this first life is a temporary illusion, while the hereafter is the eternal abode. Whoever commits a sin is requited for just that. And whoever works righteousness, male or female, while believing, these will enter paradise, wherein they receive provisions without any limits. Oh, my people, while I invite you to be saved, you invite me to the hellfire. You invite me to be unappreciative of God and to set up beside him idols that I do not recognize. I'm inviting you to the Almighty, the Forgiver. There's no doubt that what you invite me to has no basis in this world, nor in the hereafter that our ultimate return is to God and that the transgressors have incurred the hellfire. Someday you will remember what I'm telling you now. I leave the judgment of this matter to God. God is seer of all the people. God then protected him from their evil schemes while the people of Pharaoh have incurred the worst retribution. We thank God for protecting us against those diseases, conflictions, and restrictions. Yet in the same breath, we ask God to heal those folks who are afflicted. Because before we got here, we was those folks who was afflicted, right? Before knowledge came unto us, right? We was out there, right? We was afflicted, right? We wasn't on this path, right? Right? And the reason why I'm saying this is because sometimes we become high and mighty, right? And think we are above, right? Because of certain things we may be doing, right? But, but God tells us, you once was like them. Not what I'm saying, it's what God is saying. You once was like them, right? So whatever it is that they once were doing or are doing, we once was like them, right? So we probably was doing some things we had no business doing, right? So in the same token of us seeking the path and we want to be righteous, we must remember those who are not practicing this path, who are not being righteous, right? And don't condemn them or judge them to the point where we think we are God, right? Because only God judges, right? Only God condemns, right? Right? I was thinking a couple of days ago something came to me because I felt myself pointing and looking and judging. And now 
I know why God says worry about your own neck. So when you fall into that judgment bag and that point in the finger bag, worry about your own neck. And this is why God says that. Worry about your own neck. That's right. Neck. And if we look at the neck, the juggler vein, right? And they juggle that blood throughout the body, right? To keep you alive. So worry about your own neck. And then in another place in the Quran, God says he's as closest to you as your juggler vein. So what that is saying is God is saying is that I am the root and the key of your very existence to the life that you're living in this earth. Right? Because if you look at when somebody's passed out or whatever, don't they take their pulse? Either the wrist, the neck, and I found that you can do it under the arm also. Right? There's wisdom in this. So we thank God for the victory. That's right. That victory is that we have a light from our Lord. Right? That victory is that we are striving to be forgiven for some of that stuff we did. For some of that stuff we think about. For some of them things that we do that we know we're not supposed to be doing. Right? We know. But God says his, his mercy predominates his wrath. So what that is saying is that we, you, me, us got a chance. We got a chance. So don't give up on the chance that God has extended to us. You can't give up. Save so. Someday you remember what I'm telling you now. I'll leave the judgment of this matter to God. God is seeing all his people. God then protected him from their evil schemes while the people of Pharaoh have incurred the worst retribution. The hell will be shown to them day and night and on a day of resurrection amid Pharaoh's people to the worst retribution. Um, um, retribution, sorry. As they argue in hell. Wow, they're going to be arguing in hell. Ain't that something? People arguing in this earth, you're going to be arguing in hell. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Why? Mm -mm -mm. And if you look at it now, some people, some people haven't even died yet, and they're arguing in the earth, and they're in hell. Right? Right? See, you don't got to wait to get to hell to be going through hell, to feel hell, right? Because you can be going through some hell while you're living in this earth, right? 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 While you alive, breathing, waking up every day, your life can be a living hell. Right? As they argue in hell, the followers will say to their leaders, we used to be your followers. Can you spare us any part of this hell? Mm, mm, mm. Can you spare us any part of this hell? They say, man, we just want to get out. We just want to get out of this hell. The leaders will say, we are all in this together. God is judged among the people. Those in the hellfire will say to the guardians of hell, call upon your Lord to reduce the retribution for us for even one day. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. They will say, did you not receive your messengers? Hello? The messengers who delivered to you clear messages? They will reply, yes, we did. They will say, then implore as much as you wish. The imploring of the disbelievers is always in vain. Now, let's go to the victory that God is going to give us. Let's go to the victory that God is talking about. Guaranteed victory here forever. 51. Most assuredly, we will give victory.
free to our messengers and to those who believe. Both in this world and on the day, the witnesses are summoned. Some witnesses gonna be summoned, y'all. Right? On that day, the apologies of the disbelievers will not benefit them. They have incurred condemnation. They have incurred the worst destiny. We don't want no part of that. We don't want no part of the worst destiny. Because I will say this. Some of us has already tasted that worst destiny while being in this earth in some shape, form, or matter. Right? That's why we here. We trying to get it together, clean it up. Right? Build our life. Build our soul power, right? Get the peace of mind, right? Because submission, when you're striving in the path, will bring you a peace of mind. If you in submission and you ain't got a peace of mind, maybe the way you making the contact prayer could be a little bit off. Maybe the way you thinking could be a little bit off. Maybe some people you are hanging around with could be a little bit off. And they taking you off of this path called submission. That's right. Because God says, do not take who? The disbelievers for friends, but surely they're friends with one another. Right? 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 So God has given us some security measures, I'm going to call it, right? So that we can be protected from a lot of this stuff. Yeah, this stuff. Stuff we see on the news, stuff people call us and talk about to us over the phone, stuff we see on the internet, stuff we see when we out and about in the street, right? Stuff we thinking about in our mind and stuff we see on television. That stuff. Stuff that's happening in life. So we thank God for the victory every day. When you're making a five contact prayers, check this out. You are glorifying God for the victory that he has given you. That's right. The five contact prayer is so important. I heard there were snacks for the soul. Remembering God is snacks for the soul, right? Well, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's not only snacks for the soul. It's vitamins and nutrients and all that good stuff that you need to live in this world, to get through in this world, to make it through the next day. That's how good it is for you. And without this, you're going to fall. You're not going to be the best person that you can be. Not without God. You can't. Because if God created you, how could you be the best you can be without the one who's created you in the best of modes? So when you feel like I'm less than and I'm nobody and I can't do it and, uh, and they got everything and I got nothing, you better reflect on what your Lord told you. He said, I created you in the best of modes. So that means you got everything you need and you got everything that you are equipped for to do what it is that you need to do in this world. Let us repent. The title of the sermon is called The Victory. We thank God. We love God. We have fallen in love with God. 
We glorify God. We seek God. We know that God got us. You got to believe that God got you. You have to believe that. Because there's going to be some times and situations where that is all you're going to have. Is that faith? Is that belief? Is that hope? Is that action? You know what? I'm going through some stuff, but God got me. That's right. You better believe that. Telling you. Because Shaitan is busy. Shaitan is doing everything to bring about the destruction of us, our children, our loved ones, our peace of mind, our tranquility, our sense of who we are, our sense of who we ain't, and our sense of who we want to be. Satan is not just the king of chaos, but Satan is the king of confusion, which is chaos. So we have to hold on. I don't know about y'all, but I've already realized within myself that I got no more choices. I can't go out there and, um, you know, do the things I used to do anymore. Just can't do it. I'm burned out. I'm serious. We have been blessed to be on the other side of this victory. Right? Of this victory. Which is no longer a mystery. Because now we understand what it is that God wants us to do, man. Right? Right? We now understand what it is God wants us to do, man. Right? After all those hitting the wall, right? And hitting the wall and hitting the wall, right? Now we got it. We get it, God. Right? Don't we get it, y'all? Don't we get it? Yes. We got it? Yes. The victory. So when God wakes you up and it's time for Fraja, you say, thank you for the victory. When God allows you to make your sure prayer, you say, God, thank you for the victory. When God allows you to make make odds for Grand Anisha and fast in the month of Ramadan, you say, God, thank you for the victory. And when that is all over, right, you continuously say, God, thank you for the victory. Right? 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 When you go home, you turn the key to the door, thank you for the victory. When you're in the shower, you're washing, you're brushing your teeth, you're getting yourself together on a daily basis, right? Thank you for the victory. When you can hear, see, and think, and walk outside of all the pains and makes me go through, thank you for the victory, right? That's right. The victory is you. I'm the victory, you're the victory, he's the victory, the sisters are the victory. And the Quran makes us victorious. Right? Right? Okay. I'm going to wind it down. The title of the sermon is called The Victory. Ramadan is next month, God willing, right? And that's a chance for us, whatever we've been slacking on, not doing, or whatever the case may have been, or whatever, because we go through things, we do many things. You're going to go through some things. That is your chance to get, like, 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 like how James Brown used to say, get on the good foot. That's your chance to get back and get on the good foot. That's right. That's right. You know? and get you a brand new bag. And when I'm talking about get you a brand new bag, I'm talking about get you a brand new bag when you're feeling more confident about what you're doing in this path. Because Shaitan comes to, to make us doubt what it is that we're doing. It's paying off. Is it working out? Am I getting something out of this? Is it really going to benefit me? 
the shaitan will come and then put them thoughts in your head. Yeah, that's what God said, you got to stick with us. Right? Because we're going to reinforce each other. Because, and I'm not saying the people out there is bad. No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that if we're not careful, we're going to get caught up in this world life and forget what? The hereafter. And God says you got to have a balance in this path. He says get your all of this world, but don't forget the hereafter. Why would God say don't forget the hereafter? Because some people are going to forget the hereafter. Yeah. And we don't want to be those people. Because we're in the victory. We're in the victory. As we know, I, 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 just, I, I just want to read something back again. I already read. I'm gonna go back to 39, because 39 is the meat. It's the meat. 40, 39. Oh my people, this first life is a temporary illusion. God tells us what it is. It's temporary, it's an illusion. While the hereafter is the eternal abode. And this, you know, some just told me to read that again. Okay? Okay, 53. I'm going to read 52 because I read 51. On that day, the apologies of the disbelievers will not benefit them. They have incurred condemnation. They have incurred the worst destiny. We have given Moses the guidance and made the children of Israel inherit the scripture. We are the children of Israel. Somebody enlightened me about that, and I thank them. I ain't got to say their name, but um, we are the children of Israel. Therefore, be patient. I'm sorry. Their history is a lesson and a reminder for those who possess intelligence. Therefore, be patient, for God's promise is true, and ask forgiveness for your sin, and glorify and praise your Lord night and day. So God is telling us, be patient. His promise is true. So when the boogeyman is knocking at your door and knocking at your brain, you be patient. When fear is coming at you and you feel, oh man, it's too much for me and I'm feeling overwhelmed, God is saying, be patient. This is what the Creator is telling me and us here. Be patient. Because I got you. I got you. When you were swimming up the, right, the womb of life, and there was a bunch of others swimming. And swimming, and he was trying to outswim each other, but you outswam them all, right? So you are the victory, right? Simple things we can look at to see how strong we really are. That's why God speaks about that process in the Quran. Okay? It's deep. And the deeper you get with yourself, and the deeper you get with God, and the deeper you get with us. Things are going to be shown and revealed in those signs that God talks about. You will understand what those signs mean, what those signs are saying to you. You will get it. Yes, you will get it. And you will be happy and you will be at peace. And peace is not about the pieces of things that we get and got had or think about getting. The pieces where you got the peace within yourself. The contentment where you are your own best friend. You are your own best company. You love yourself on a deeper level and you fall in love with God. And then God will show you how to deal with folks, how to get along with people, how to maneuver and do what it is you got to do. But you got to do some of those things. There's some requirements. Right? They're not going to hire you to be an engineer if you don't know nothing about engineering. 
right? <laughs> Not unless you born with that gift, because some people are born with them gifts. Never went to school, and they can do certain things, and that's from God. That God put that in them. There's so many signs, but sometimes, like God say, they walk by heedlessly. Right? Be right in their face. They still don't see it. Right? Now, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. I'm just speaking. That's it. Just bear with me. Well, God's promise is true, and that's forgiveness for your sin. The ones we know about, the ones that nobody knows about, and the ones that only God knows about. Because I, I don't know about y'all, but there's some, some sins I will never speak about. You know, I would go to the grave with that, and, and because I realize that this is not a confession. We don't come here and confess our sins. We don't come here and do that. This ain't about coming in and confessing your sin. This is about you looking at your sin, getting yourself together so you can win and continue on in the victory that God gives us in this life and hereafter. Right? We ain't coming up here confessing. Because if you do, you might confess some stuff and I'm going to look at you differently. Right? So that's why some things is between you and your Lord, man. You go to God, you say, God, I was doing X, Y, and Z, right? And I need you to forgive me. That's it. And then after you do that, you repent and you reform. That means once you go to God, repenting, right? Then you reform. That means you walk and you don't do that stuff no more. That's what it's talking about. This ain't about confessing your sins up in here. Worry about your own neck. Right? See how easy and simple submission is? We ain't floating on no carpets. We ain't rubbing no genie lamps. We're not doing that. We're going straight to God alone, to the Creator. That's who we're going to. That's it. And glorify and praise your Lord night and day. So that's our mission while we're here. Submission and submission. There is a mission. We have a mission. Right? We have a mission. Right? Submitting to God. Okay? And I'm going to check this out. I time a lot. I time the prayer. If you're making prayer like how we are making Salah, it's three minutes. Oh my God, three minutes. So that means 15 minutes a day out of your life that God has given you is not asking too much. Because God don't need you, we need God. So look, 15 minutes out of our life, 15 minutes and you get so much out of that, that's a win, 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 win. That's not a win, win. That's a win, 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 win. I'm telling you, man. We got to understand what it is we doing. This ain't no exercise. This ain't hot scotch. This ain't double nuts. This ain't scalzies. And this ain't stick ball. This is about soul power, saving your soul. Right? Staying in the victory. Because the victory is going to increase. God ain't going to just give you one victory. God is going to give you a succession of victories in your life. You're going to see God working in different parameters, in different areas of your life. Now just sit still and, 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 and take a deep breath. Breathe in and out. That's a victory. You're allowed to breathe. Can you hear my voice? 
That's a victory. Are you able to get around a shock of all the ancient pains we go through? That's a victory. I'm winding down, y'all, but I gotta get this stuff out. I gotta get it out, because I don't think I'm gonna be t t doing too much hollering and screaming once Ramadan coming. <laughs> So I, we gotta get it out, get it out, cause we, you know, we, cause Ramadan is coming, and we gonna need some of this inspiration we getting now, cause before you know it's gonna be here, Ramadan, yes, yes. Another gift, another victory. Bear with me, y'all. Okay. Surely, those who argue against God's revelations without proof are exposing the arrogance that is hidden inside their chest. And they, and they are not even aware of it. Wow. So that means that People are doing stuff and they're not aware of it. Thank God we are aware and we're constantly being made aware of what it is that we are doing. Yes. Yes. That's a gift. That's a gift. Therefore seek refuge in God. He is the hearer the seer. Okay. The creation of the heavens and the earth is even more awesome than the creation of the human being. So God is saying, you not all of that. Stop thinking you all of that. You got a little money now, a little jewelry now, big house on the hill, big and white fence. You know, and all that good stuff. And you think you all of that. No. No. That's just a little something, something that I allow you to experience. And what I'm trying to say is, we know that's what it is, so when we get it, we know how to act. And if we don't get it, we still know how to act and we find a contentment with our Lord. Because we know we're going to have the mansions in the here. So if we don't get whatever we don't get down here, if you're working righteousness and you're doing what's right and God accepts you, you're going to get all the goodies. And them goodies will never, ever, ever run out. Right? You ain't got to worry about nobody knocking on the door. Oh, you didn't pay the note, you got to take this. You didn't pay the note, you got to take that. Because once God gives you something, God is not an Indian giver. He ain't going to take it back from you. You take it back from you. Right? Oh, God did this. God didn't do nothing to you. You did it to you, man. We need to stop blaming God. We need to look at the real person that's doing stuff. It's usually us or the shaitan, the whispers of the devil, that throws us off, right? Right? That makes us act the way we act. Stop using God as a crutch, right? No! Accept responsibility for what it is you're doing if you want to taste the victory, man. Plain and simple. So the creation of the heavens and the earth is even more awesome than the creation of the human being. But most people do not know. Thank God we know. Not equal are the blind and the seer. Nor are those who believe in work righteousness equal to the sinners. Rarely do you take heed. God is telling us, me, all of us, rarely do we take heed. So inshallah, I'm closing. There's some more stuff I wanted to read, but you know, I'm getting kind of hot. So, let us take heed, let us continue to support one another, let us continue to pray for one another, right? Let us continue to be happy for one another, right? And let us have confidence in the victory, right? Because we know we're fighting a war, good versus evil, right? Right? So we got to continue to fight 
We got to continue to hold on. We cannot give up. And I just want to say this before we close. Let us fall in love with God alone. So anything else you say, oh, I love you, I need you, I can't live without you, you need to stop that, change that, and give all that to God. So whatever it is you love, God will make sure you keep it. So let's end with that mixed life.